so I, I have always been fascinated by the skyscraper curse. And it, it is, I've never really looked into it like you did. Your book is absolutely fascinating. Can you explain what the theory is first? Well, it, the basic theory is <clears throat> that when a record-setting skyscraper is built anywhere in the world, um, by the time it's completed and ready to open, the world is going to be experiencing an economic crisis. And so the curse is the economic crisis that is associated with the building of a record-setting skyscraper. Now, if I'm not mistaken, it was the Woolworth building uh, around 19, what was it, 14, 15, something like that, that did not, uh, did, does not fall into that category. And that was the world's first real kind of skyscraper. Well, you know, we've been building taller and taller for about 150 years. And uh, the skyscraper curse occurred earlier during the Panic of 1907. But as the Woolworth building was being built, and it was being redesigned to go even higher to set the record. Uh, and then when it set the record in 1913, there was no economic crisis that followed. And so the original architect of the skyscraper curse, a uh, real estate analyst named Andrew Lawrence, he called the Woolworth building uh, a mistake of the skyscraper curse. But when I went in and looked at the detailed statistics, what I found is that the U.S. economy was going into a severe recession, uh, just as the Woolworth building was being prepared to be opened um, in uh, early 1914. But what Andrew Lawrence forgot or uh, just neglected was the fact that World War I was starting in Europe, and all of the, the major powers of the world were getting ready for a war, and they were buying steel, they were buying grain, they were buying weapons, mm -hmm. they were buying materials, and so that reactivated the U.S. economy and brought us out of what was one of the worst downturns in U.S. economic mm. history. Okay, so um, give me some, because I, I think it's fascinating. Uh, the Chrysler building is completed. There's actually two skyscrapers. Donald Trump owns one of them now uh, by Wall Street, and the, the Chrysler building completed. We have the crash of 29. The Empire State Building's completed a year later in 1930. Um, and we go into the Depression. Um, in, what was it, 1970, the World Trade Center? That's right. Um, we were on a, a tremendous record-breaking uh, business cycle boom during the 1960s. Uh, economists from the Keynesian School uh, thought that they had been able to do away with the business cycle and business cycle courses were being taken out of the curriculum uh, going into 1970 as the World Trade Tower 1 and 2 were being built and rising in New York City, uh, soon to be followed by the Sears Tower in Chicago. And what happened was uh, just as all of this grandeur and glory for the Keynesians was reaching a pinnacle, the U.S. went into uh, an economic crisis. Uh, we had the stagflation of 1970 through 1982. We uh, had the U.S. Uh, going off the gold standard. Things were so bad. We had wage and price controls being imposed by Richard Nixon in 1971, just as the trade towers were coming uh, to a new record height. And so um, that was a, a spectacular uh menacing sort of ex example of why we shouldn't trust Keynesian economics. So before we get into what, you know, what you see on the horizon, um, uh, what I really appreciated was the theory on why this is happening. Now there's, a, there's another theory out there that like, for instance, the Sears tower, whenever you build a tower, and I think, I think again, Woolworth was the exception to this. Whenever you, whenever they build a record tower, that company is at its peak. It's all downhill from, from there. Um, and you kind of can understand that because you're thinking, okay, well, they're arrogant now. But the way you look at this skyscraper and the things that you say, um, th why this happens, makes total sense. So can you explain your theory on why this is true, why it happens? Well, you know, the people who build these buildings, they may be arrogant. And they, their arrogance may have risen 
um, as a result of the position that they've risen to. But basically, the underlying cause of all this is cheap credit, low interest rates, artificially low interest rates from the central bank or our Federal Reserve. And those low interest rates in the short run cause people to you know, invest more, invest in long-term projects, invest in big, spectacular projects um, because you know the, ch- the credit is cheap. Uh, they're making profits. Everybody seems to be doing well. And so the Fed can create a rosy economic scenario in the short run, but what it's really doing is causing people to make the wrong investments in the economy, to go beyond what would otherwise be economically rational. And so the number one signal, the number one price in any economy is the interest rate. And when the Fed cooks the books and reduces that interest rate for economic, political, or whatever reason they do it for, if they do it too long and too far, ultimately they're going to create male investments or bad investments like record-setting skyscrapers, uh, which otherwise would never have been built. 